there's a reason why people are in talk therapy for decades and not necessarily getting well and healed because we have to address the energetic component. We have to address the body component. The body is storing these traumas, okay? Um, there's karmic components. I mean, there's there's so many other layers to to our to our experiences. And now I get to address these with other people that I address to myself and I'm having people come to me and they're like, wow, I kicked my addictions in a few months that I've had for years. Like, how did I do that? So it's been really cool for me to be a part of and to watch that happen. I love that. I love that. And for, for anybody out there listening to this, definitely, um, I, I love I love the fact that at any time, like we mentioned, new awareness and consciousness can come to you. So anybody inspired to, to reach out to, to Zach, I highly recommend. I normally say that later in the episode, later in yeah. the conversation, but even now, like it just follows Zach and uh, it's, it just, what he's talking about, it, it's so valuable. And um, at the same time, I'm very happy, Zach, that you, um, and for everybody out there that's uncovered that they realize there's more going on than just what we see in these physical avatars and in this physical world because that's yeah. what really makes life fascinating to me is to know that there's way more going on than than we could ever know and at the same time we're just different expressions of you know the same you know non-physical energy and yeah. stuff yeah mm -hmm. like that that lights me up like i, I love knowing that and yeah i root for people so much because i want people to be reminded of that for them so that we can just know like for me zach all that i really what i care about most is in this moment the only moment that's promised to any of us or that yeah. we really have any control over then it's an eternal moment of now like this only thing that really ever yeah. exists is in this moment am i being who i truly am am i am i allowing myself to be connected with it that, that energy to where mm -hmm. you know i can i can see awesome synchronicities or have cool ideas drop into my to my mind because you know, I'm, I'm connected with it and I don't have to be necessarily in a meditation to be connected with it. I could just be chilling right now, just being yeah. a beat. You know, I don't yeah. have to be doing anything specific or, you know, it doesn't. No. So that awareness is just, that's my favorite part of life because that's, that's life simplified is like right here and now. And yeah, with, even with all the, because with the traumas and all this stuff, and I'd like to hear your perspective on this. Um, yeah. These are, these are continue like, because of what you just described, how it's just more than just, you know, it's more than just talking it out. Like this is stuff that's sometimes stored in the body or yeah. you know, ancestral. I mean, there's just so many layers to oh, yeah. it. So a lot of times what that does is it plays out like patterns in, in, in our lives to where we're, we're not even realizing that this is affecting our right now, present moment energy. Um, mm -hmm. And so I just, I love to give everybody a little bit of peace out there as well, just knowing that in the moments where you are, you know, you're feeling, you're feeling good, where you're at peace or you're enjoying yourself, you're having a good time. Like those traumas aren't affecting you in that moment. <laughs> but yeah. when they're affecting yeah. you and a lot of times they're blind spots and you don't really realize that the reason why mm -hmm. you've been feeling crappy all day <laughs> is yeah. a lot of that stuff. And that can be triggered. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Um, like, but I, I always love to, cause a lot of times people can know, okay, I have these childhood traumas or I have these, you know, and they could think that that has to be like their whole life like their whole day when the, in the moments where you're like present with your friend or present with your family or present with nature like those aren't affecting you in those moments it's the no. other moments where it's just what could you speak on that a little bit as far as um because i just love to give people peace when it comes to all this because people i think take life so serious and they think oh no i'm now i'm damaged goods and until i get all this worked out i can't be happy mm -hmm. which that's not true <laughs> Yeah, no, it is. It is. It is recognizing. So, so when people have been through trauma, they're constantly living the past within the present moment. Okay. So a lot of work is, is done to, to get people's bodies and minds to recognize that this, that the past isn't within your present moment. So when you're out of nature, it's, it's bringing mindfulness to the situation. So it's recognizing like I'm in nature. I'm safe. What do my feet feel like on the ground? What does the wind feel like on my body? It's about allowing yourself to be present within that moment. It's allowing yourself not to project into the future. Like, oh my God, this could happen, this could happen. And recognizing, pulling yourself back in and recognizing the future is an imagined creation, right? We're creating an emotional response over, over a fictitious creation in our mind. So once again, being present. Um, it's a skill, right? Because these are things that we, we're not taught from a young age. We're not taught how to be present, right? And so, yeah, it really is bringing people into the present moment and just knowing that, like, and allowing them to cultivate safety within their environment for them to recognize, like, in this moment, like, I am okay, right? And I know I've got all this other stuff to unpack, but right now, I'm all right, right? So it doesn't have to define your tw your experience 24-7, right? I love that. That's so important. That, Zach, that was my greatest weakness maybe a decade ago is mm -hmm. the... I, I, 
I probably would have won the gold medal of not being present. <laughs> well, me too. Me too, man. I mean, I was really not. I was. I had. I had always called like destination addiction for a while, which was always like, and that was a huge issue in my life. It was always like, the next thing is when I'm going to be happy. Like, this is the, if I just achieve that, like I, I, I bought If I achieve this, or if I get into the fancy loss, that'll. And I was seeing, and that was really what started leading to this awakening I had. Was it was like nothing was changing. Right. And so until I went in and worked in the, on my internal environment, nothing about my external was going to bring about happiness or peace. Right. So I think that was a huge lesson that I had to learn. Absolutely. What, what, and I, I can totally relate. And what I no, started noticing, Zach, is like the even the victories in life were so short lived. Like I was a, an athlete, I was a baseball player. And if I would had a, a good game, like it was just like I was already thinking like our like it was almost like, yeah, I'm supposed to have a good game. And I wasn't even like happy yeah. about it. But then when I had a bad game, I'm miserable. So it was like, I couldn't win. It was like, even the victories were like so short lived. And people would tell me like, well, like you don't even like take the time to like celebrate anything like good that's happening. Like you're always talking about like the next thing. And along that path, like you're, you're disappointed the whole time. And, you're, and I just didn't realize I was always projecting, like you said, into the, yeah. into the future and not enjoying any of the, the present moments, which it's a great recipe for a, Lots of unhappiness in the, the present moment. <laughs> that, tends, that tends that tends to be a trauma response. So I mean that is that's and I've I've dealt with that as well is 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 this mentality of perfectionism. So when you have a good a good moment, whatever you do, it could be a good test, it could be a good speech, it could be a good game, right? It's just like okay, I just met the baseline I set for myself. Great, like okay, I'm I'm I'm, I'm safe, safe now. And then you're just projecting onto oh my god, but where's the next one where I'm gonna have to prove myself? And then. Oh, and then when you don't meet those insanely high expectations you set for yourself, then all of a sudden you're a failure, right? Or you're really hard on yourself. So like, yeah, unwiring that perfectionism thing was is tough. And I, I've been there as well. It's, it's a difficult thing. Yeah.